So next, I want you to practice graphing letter A, B, and C. And so what you're graphing are the given functions and then also graphing the parent function. So it's a good review on uh, graphing of those. So pause the video and try these out, please, A, B, and C. So we tried this out. The first one is a line at x plus 2. And so we would start at 2, and then our slope is up 1, right 1. Now what if I were to put parentheses around here, because I want to start thinking about zero product property. Um, if you think about that, we would think about this as left 2. Right, that would be left two, and notice it is shifted left two, and it passes through the x-axis. Notice how it passes. And then the parent function, same thing, that's just x, it passes through that x-axis there. Letter B is a parabola, so the parent function is x squared, and it bounces or touches that x-axis right here at zero, zero for the parent. So notice that it bounces, it does not pass through. So if we have x minus 3 squared, that means it's right 3. Notice that it bounces off of that x-axis. Now, it's really important because it's squared, then it's going to bounce off of that x-axis there, okay? As opposed to when it's odd, it's going to cross. So x plus 1 cubed, that moves left 1. Um, and then so just the parent function is at 0, 0, right 1, 1, and left negative 1, negative 1 here. And there is our parent in pink, and here is the blue. And again, notice that it passes through that x-axis at negative 1. So letter D, let's sketch the graph of f of x equals negative x plus 1 times x minus 4. So that would be at x equals negative 1 and x equals 4 would be our x-intercept. So the opposite, okay, using zero product property just as a reminder. So if we use to use a zero product property, you can set it equal to zero and solve. So notice that it's the opposite. So x minus four equals zero, it'll end up being a positive four. So the other thing we know is that the degree, so to figure out the degree, we count how many x's we have looking at the exponents as well. So nothing in the front, we have one x here, two x's here. So the degree is two, the leading coefficient sign is negative. So if the degree is two, it's even, that tells me that the ends are going to go down and down. So then when we're graphing, we graph the, we label those x-intercepts, um, we, we put our end behavior, right? So those little arrows at the end, and then we start at one of those arrows. So what these arrows mean is where we're gonna start and end, right? Of course, it's gonna continue on forever, but it helps us in determining where we will start and end. So we start at that one of the arrows, It'll pass through the negative 1 and pass through the 4. Now we know that it passes through, this is a quadratic, um, it's a parabola, and so um, that'll help us in looking at our graph there. Now one thing I'd like to emphasize is E and F. So E, zeros of a polynomial raised to an odd power, odd power, like number letter A and letter B, they're raised to an odd power, raised to the power of 1, raised to the power of 3, then the graph crosses the x-axis at that zero. So examples of zeros um, that we could have are uh, like 2 to the x, which means our x would equal zero. If we had something that we see x minus 1 to the third power, we would have x equals 1, and it just passes at that point. If we had x plus 4, we could say that our zero is x minus 4. Right? And it passes at all those points. So notice again that these are just to the first power, third power, or the first power. It'll cross at each of these places at these zeros. Now, if a polynomial is raised to an, zeros of a polynomial are raised to an even power, then it's going to bounce or touch the x axis only. So it does not cross. It bounces or touches the x axis at that zero or x intercept. So you'll see something like 3x squared, right? So notice that it's squared. And so at the zero, it's going to, I'm going to call it bounce. So it's just like a ball bouncing off of the ground. It, it does that on the x-axis. Then you could see something like x minus 2, again, raised to the 2 power. So it's an even power. So that x equals a positive 2, it'll bounce at that x-intercept. If you see something like x plus 7 to the 4th power, so again, that's an even power, then at x equals negative 7, it's just going to bounce, okay? 
So let's try some of these examples here, just two. We have uh, G and H. So first identify our zeros in this factored form. So it's always the opposite. So if it's negative seven, that'll be a positive seven because think about it, seven minus seven is zero and zero product property, zero is zero. Product means to multiply. Um, and so if we make this zero, zero times whatever the other ones are is gonna make it zero. And that's what we want. So this is seven. The next one is opposite. So that'd be three, three minus three is zero. And then the other X intercept is negative one. Now I did put the y-intercept here just to kind of help us along of where it's gonna pass. The y-intercept, y-intercept is here, the vertical line. And so we're just sketching. So let's just label the negative 63 for our y-intercept. Now let's label our x-intercepts at negative one, positive three, and positive seven. Now the degree, you count the number of x's, so there's no x's in front. We have one x to the first power, another x to the first power, and another one to the first power. So the degree number is three, which is odd. The leading coefficient is negative, so that tells me that it is going to go in opposite directions, up on the left, down on the right. And again, these arrows are where you start. So I'll start on the left arrow. Everything is passing because nothing is squared, right? This is all to the first power. So starting at this arrow, it passes through the negative one, it'll pass through the y-intercept, it'll pass through the three, pass through the seven, then end at that last arrow. So let's do another example, letter H. And so we notice now that we have a square at, on one of our factored binomials. And so let's first, let's notate or find where our zeros are. So using the zero product property. So when you have two X, so just as a reminder, you could set two X equal to zero, divide by two, so X equals zero. So whenever you see a monomial on the front with an X with an X, okay, so notice this doesn't have an X, this one has an X, it is just gonna be zero. Think about it. If you plug in zero for X, two times zero is zero, so that is zero. It is not squared, so we'll leave it alone. Minus six, that's a positive six. X minus three, that's a positive three. And then as a reminder, it is going to bounce because of the square. So let's go ahead and label our X axis. So our X intercepts at zero, at positive three, and it's gonna bounce, and at positive six. The degree, so it's a little tricky. We have to add our exponents. So we have one, two, and this is actually two more. So what, there's two x's here, so that's two, three, four. Our degree is actually four, which is even, and the sign is positive. Okay, so another way that I'm gonna prove that to you is if you have two x, what if we were to expand it? So to expand the square, what you're gonna do is you're gonna write it twice. And so now you see that there are one, the two x is one, two, three, four x's here. And the shortest way, again, is just to count the number of exponents. So this is two of them, one and one. So since it's even and positive, we know the end behavior is going to go up and up. Again, it gives us a place to start and end our graph. So let's start at one of the arrows. I'll start at the right side. It's going to pass through everything except for the three where it bounces. So I'm gonna pass through the six, it's gonna come back up and it needs to bounce off of the three and then it's gonna pass through the zero and continue on up towards infinity. Now, of course, to label the, um, the ends of the graph, so we know that our y is approaching infinity, y is approaching infinity, and then our x's, the x's don't change, x is always negative infinity on the left and positive infinity on the right. It's the y's that change value. Okay, depending on whether it's going up or down.